Hey, what's up folks? Goran here from reefunderdove.com. In today's video, we'll be talking about many ways that we can trigger that RTN or STN on our acros. All right, let's start first with salinity and temperature. I know it's basic. When I started this hobby, I just didn't get the message when people tell me, hey, just keep your salinity stable. All right, they have ATO and I'm checking it by my reflectometer to be right. No, the acros has to be perfect, okay? Grab two instruments so you can measure your salinity. I do have reflectometer that I can calibrate. I do have calibration solution for it. So make sure to have it as well. If you do have any instrument you have, make sure that's possible. That's something you can calibrate. Yeah, I have reflectometer and do have Hanna salinity checker. With those two, I can calibrate both. I can double check them. And of course I can only send ICP test and double check it like that as well. So, all right, temperature. I have three, actually four ways to check my temperature. I know, right? I do have seat shader return pump, which I do love that it's telling me temperature of the tank as well. And it's sending me notifications on uh, my phone if uh, I have a temperature swing or my temperature is too low. It doesn't matter what happens, you know the deal. Same thing, I have it with my Apex. And then of course I have a temperature controller that tells me as well. Plus I do have one of those laser guns that are very useful when doing water change. You can always double check your tank and double check your water that you're gonna do your water change with. So I have those four. Next two things that are very easy to take care of is uh, lighting and flow, especially flow since it's just so visual. You can just see it, what's going on. When you look into getting pumps for your tank, usually there's going to be like little charts. You need to have this much flow for this much gallons. And have a look at those. The best thing for flow is just to have someone that's been in hobby for a while and just, just tells you, hey, this is too much or this is not enough. And uh, the longer you're in the hobby, you're gonna figure out what's too much flow, what's not too much flow, especially for different corals. But acropores love a lot of flow. Basically, if you're not stripping skin off your acros, you have enough flow. What I like to do is not have my acros straight up front of the power head, but everything else will be all right. Most of the cases, the RTN will appear when we don't have enough flow, especially when you have little small colonies or bigger colonies, it's gonna happen underneath of the coral, since uh, in that spot, really the coral is not getting uh, no lighting or flow. So make sure at least that you can provide that flow that's pushing that towards uh, the bottom of the coral as well. What you can do, you can always uh, manipulate the power heads that you have in your tank already, or you can add on more. Of course, in the beginning, when you just started uh, into acroporas you won't need much you can have just one big power has going to push most of that water but afterwards as your corals grow into smaller bigger colonies you don't need more flow so you can cover that coal colony i've seen a lot of people if they have a big colony of acroporas they tend to even cut it into smaller colonies so they can get flow everywhere that's one of the tricks you can consider as well as far as lighting goes lighting can be a little bit tricky you cannot check it visually except on just certain occasions. For instance, if you have some corals shading other corals, you'll be able to see that for sure. You can see a coral on top of coral and you see the shaded spot, very easy to see. Most of the LEDs that you're gonna get, especially better ones like Ecotech or any other LED that you get in this hobby, they're not as directional they used to be. They have uh, way more big of the spread and you tend to not burn as much as uh, tips on acroporas with those lights since they're not getting blasted with a lot of power. One other thing you can do to prevent those burnt tips, what I've seen at least in my experience is uh, when you have higher phosphates, high nitrates, your coals tend to be more happier, the skin on them tend to be more thicker, the colors on them just look more solid and just they're way more healthier and more resilient coral than they are if you run those numbers on the lower end. So if you have lots of lighting on top of your acros, which is totally normal, that's what they like, but know that you have to match those phosphates and nitrates levels as well, or that food intake to match that higher par. Of course, you wanna check the par. You're gonna make sure that's in between, let's say 200 to 400 or so. That par is usually where my acros do the best. One big deal as far as lighting goes, instead of you having just one, or two lighting sources, just have multiple, like for instance, I do have XR15 and XR chosen aside. And then on my bigger display, I do have my Orfix and T5s on a side. And if you ever seen a hobbyist that knows how to grow acroporas, just look at their lighting. They usually have a lot of lighting on top of the tank and that's pretty visual, you can see it. Just make sure to test it so you know that you're in a good par range. And that, that's about it. That good lighting coverage is gonna make sure that you have less RTN and SDN 
when you uh, listen to people talk, they talk about stability. Stability is the key. Well, in my mind, it was like, hey, well, that means that I have to keep my alkalinity around eight, eight and a half. And as soon as my alkalinity goes down to six, six and a half, or goes all the way up, that I have to adjust it very quickly because my tank lo loves stability. Uh, no, <laughs> that's not how it works. So in most of the cases, when people say stability, they say, make sure that you don't adjust your chemistry fast. Whatever happens in a reef tank, it's gonna happen slow. For instance, if you haven't tested your alkalinity for a while, and uh, now you tested it and it's six, don't adjust it that day so you can raise it up right away. That's, that's a big no-no as far as agroporas go. You're gonna start your STN and RTN that moment if you do that. It doesn't matter if it's major elements, it doesn't matter if it's minor elements, whatever you're lacking or you have too much in your tank, take your time to bring it down or bring it up. What I like to do, I never like to adjust nothing manually. Or if I have to do it manually, just pred it into a whole week. Let's say I've just done my ICP test and my strontium was very low. Add a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, a little bit day after, just spread it and that way you'll ramp up that element very slowly up and that's what acros love the only time you have to adjust your chemistry is when something is wildly off let's say you overdose cockwasser big time and now you have to do something like that instance or else the whole tank is gonna crash that's the only time you have to adjust if you look at your tank and your corals are doing good breathe in breathe out and adjust for everything slowly Alkalinity, phosphates, nitrates, I don't care what is it, magnesium, all your minor elements. Just take your time. I've made so much mistakes when I was a beginner on this, that this is, I can make just a single video just about this topic, because this is so important. As far as other things, if you see your RTN or SDN happening and you think it's chemistry, I would do ICP tests to make sure that you're not really high in any metals, maybe you have some magnet leaking that you don't know about. What you can do, you can send the ICP and, and just check your magnets. Usually magnets are the ones that tell to break and leak. So you have a little magnet holders for your probes or a magnets for your frag racks, check those. When I started this hobby, I was lacking a lot of things. But as far as chemistry goes, I had very low pH. Without Cockwasser, I still to this date, at least where tank stands right now, I cannot keep my acropores alive. So people talk about pH. Yeah, those Cockwassers, you can have faster growth. Sure, but in some cases, like in my case, I needed to raise that pH a little bit higher or else my acros just won't grow. They'll die, they'll go away, and uh, I just couldn't keep them alive. So maybe you have the problem, maybe you don't. You're gonna have to test your pH. And in most of the cases, it depends where you have your tank set up. If you have your tank set up in a big, large area and there's not a lot of people there, usually your pH will be all right. If you have your tank in a smaller house when there's a lot of people, usually they have problems with pH. That's kind of my problem. I used to have problems, but not enough. Phosphates and nitrates used to run my tank on very low phosphate and nitrates. And that's how I know that your corals will be very finicky if you run your tank on low phosphates and nitrates. And that's about it as far as chemistry goes. Of course, there's lots of other things that uh, I'm sure I skipped in this video. If I skipped anything, I'll try to add it in the comments down below. And of course, let me know uh, your biggest mistakes as far as RTN and SDN goes. But for most of the cases, if someone asks me, hey, what's going on with my acros? I see RTN or SDN, I'll, I'll tell them, hey, double check your salinity and temperature first. Look visuals as far as your lighting goes and uh, where your corals is losing tissue. If it's on top of the tips, you usually have too much lighting or not enough phosphates or nitrates. If it's in the bottom, usually you don't have enough flow or lighting coverage to surround that acropora. And of course, as far as chemistry goes, do that ICP and just take your time with adjusting your elements, minor, major, doesn't matter. And that's it for today's video. If you guys like the video, feel free to like it. Subscribe, of course, they'll help a lot. If you guys haven't seen my latest anatomy video, I'm gonna make sure to post it right here. With all that out of the way, see you guys in the next one. Peace.